Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And I expected you to say, and I'm Ruby. <laughs> uh, not quite. I think you're more of a Yang or Blake. I'm severely addicted to the song I burn. <laughs> and this is our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episode 12. Yes, we're doing a one-episode recording because it was the season finale. <laughs> Trust me, we can talk plenty about this episode. Yeah. So, shall we start with the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good place to start. Mm-hmm. Ah, that fight. <laughs> yes, and Ren totally losing it. Mm-hmm. We also found out he can spread his semblance out over the ground towards people. Even though it had a calming effect on him, I'm almost thinking it's more of a cloak to others. Yeah, because it didn't seem to affect, at least that I could tell, someone who has more attention to detail might notice, that it had an effect on how Crow and Jean acted. Mm -hmm. They seem to be in the same emotional state as they were when they got cloaked by it. So it may just be something that blocks out or conceals their emotions. And the effects of the semblance may be different between direct touch and transmitting it through an inorganic medium like the ground. Yes, mm -hmm. I know there's bacteria in the ground. Bear with me here. Yeah, because it suddenly seemed like the Grimm couldn't see them at all. Yeah, so was it more just an emotional cloaking or does it actually have a physical cloaking component as far as the Grimm being able to see? Or how do Grimm see? Do Grimm only see in emotions? Yeah, that's what I was just about to hypothesize. <laughs> Maybe Grimm only see you based on your emotions, and specifically your negative emotions. Which is why they see fighters when they're fighting them, because you have a lot of negative emotions when you're attacking something. Yeah, but just imagine if you could be happy-go-lucky while fighting. The Grimm would never see you coming, if that's true. Mm. Unless they can see positive emotions too, but they don't get drawn to them. Yeah, because they feed more on the negative. Mm-hmm. And I love how they just kept stringing us along for Crow. Is he gonna die? Is he gonna die? Huh? Huh? Is he? He may have died. No, he's still alive. But will he still be alive? <laughs> yeah, from an outside perspective, I'm like, yeah, I don't believe you're going to kill him. Because it's more misfortune for those around him to stay alive. Mm-hmm. But still, it's like, hmm? Hmm? <laughs> yes, and... Man, that was a ridiculous grim. Once we got the full look, to me it looked less chimera-like and more like a Death Rider. Yeah, I only hypothesized a chimera because we didn't see a full body shot. Yeah, and even though they were, you know, merged in one form, it looked more like horse and rider mm -hmm. than a chimera form, even though it did have some chimera aspects. Though as I was watching the fight, I kind of hypothesized that maybe just going for the horse head would be more important because the body kept slumping over like it wasn't really there. I was thinking the horse, attacking the horse would be more effective because I was specifically thinking about the legs to limit the mobility. That's before we saw how far out the arms could stretch. But I'm like, still, then it would be stationary. And it seemed like the rider portion was more reactive. So it's like, hmm... You could probably work that part into a frenzy and have it make mistakes, but the horse portion of the Grimm seemed a lot more stoic and calm and methodical. And then its head gets smashed in by a hammer! <laughs> and I'll mail it to myself and smash it with a hammer! Or to save on postage. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that fight was very neat, very well done. Lots of action, a little bit more backstory, a nice finishing scene there at the end with Ren. Yes, really coming to terms and taking out the Grimm and doing it in a way that did not endanger his teammates because he was being so reckless before he was putting the rest of the team at risk, which is why Nora wouldn't let him go back out there. Mm -hmm. Until she slapped him silly. Yes, well, slapped him calm. <laughs> uh, well. Calmer. Mm-hmm. Also, nice little comedic moment for hanging from her hammer. Don't look! 
Really, you're thinking about that in the middle of a fight. I know you, like, have a severe crush on him and everything, but still. <laughs> Which seems to be mildly reciprocated now, or was before, but now he's fully admitting it. <laughs> yes, but is it a platonic reciprocation in you are my very dear friend? Or is it a slightly more romantic reciprocation? Because hand-holding isn't necessarily romantic love. Mm, we'll see. Mm -hmm. And it was nice how they used a bit more of Nora's song instrumental. And I like the way it transitioned into the song that was played during Ruby's end sequence. Mm -hmm. Which is really nice having her narrate over the end while we get cuts to everyone else and what they're doing. And I had a feeling Blake was going to pick up the original sign of white fang that was a nice touch because you know she's going back to the roots of what white fang is because she said no we're not going to destroy it we're going to take it back mm -hmm. recreate it in the image of its original intent peace between faunus and humans with equal rights mm -hmm. not these terror tactics that have been used by adam toros and his gang mm -hmm. hmm and speaking of those scenes during the voiceover when yang got off that boat i was like is she heading towards blake i know because i'm like that was the same captain yeah and that was the same town that those two got off in because the buildings match so i was really starting to wonder if she did go for blake but no she's now on the same road heading towards the same town that ruby is yes because if there was any doubt, since they didn't clearly show us which sign Yang was following, whether it was the one for the Mistral or the one that said Bandits, her vocalization of, you are in so much trouble when I catch up with you, that is not something you say about your mother. That is something you say about your baby sister who ran off without you. Mm -hmm. Though they did say which directions the signs were pointing, and clearly Yang went down the direction that the sign for Mistral yes. went. And it was a nice way to end the season. It wrapped up some stuff and it's leading into other stuff because as some people have a hypothesized that I talk with, this is probably going to be a three season arc. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that they're not trying to cram it all into one season, but I just want to smack some of the people who say nothing's happening. A lot happened in this season. And there's a lot of subtle stuff going on that's leading to other stuff. And I didn't find it hard to follow at all. It wasn't confusing. It all the jumping around was actually pretty clear to me. The only thing I may have been confused on at one point was how much time was passing between cutting between characters. Because at some points it seems like it was a longer period of time between one cut and the other. And we were jumping back and forth between characters. So I'm thinking there's separate timelines going on, but they're syncing up now near the end here. Because mm -hmm. I'm tempted to like sit down with all the episodes of this season and edit together just the different sequences and see how they play out when you watch them in order by themselves without cutting between different characters. If you suddenly find that much free time, please do that. <laughs> uh, do you happen to have a free time finder? Uh, no. Okay, then probably not likely. Uh, like before I move on to the after credit stuff, was there any more about any more stuff in the episode itself you wanted to go over? Well, yeah. <laughs> then please do. <laughs> Well, because a lot of the episode was focused on the fight, but we had a lot during Ruby's outro sequence because we touched on each character, Yang moving towards Ruby, Blake getting ready to take back the White Fang, the Chameleon Girl reporting back to the White Fang headquarters. And I like how at the moment she said people that were lost. I have a feeling that particular character is lost and we may end up having her as a good guy. Mm-hmm. That was another thing, is the timing of the phrasing. Also, during Ruby's letter composition, there was callback to the intro song. Hmm. As talk about fairy tales and how things were so different than what they thought they would be. Hmm. Which reminds me, we have to analyze that intro song. Because I don't think it did what they usually do with the intro song. Because I don't see a lot about the season in that. I see more callbacks to previous seasons and how they've grown up since then. Yes, I think it's more present focused, except for a couple of uh, lines that could be forward leading. Uh, the section on Blake about the tragic story that leads up to the reveal of a hero's glory. Hmm. Because Blake is leading the charge to take back the White Fang, and she's had a lot of tragedy. 
Hmm. Didn't see that. Good analyst there. Also, the part where the song focuses on each of the villains and matches the lyric because we have Can We Just Go Home as Cinder's looking away from the screen, shadowing her sudden reluctance now that she has the Fall Maiden's power and has been so injured. Hmm. And when it goes over to Tyrion, it's Can We Follow Through? And he failed his mission, so what else can he do now? And then the part about the loss of hope is focused on Salem. Hmm. And then the Grimm coming forward. You know, what What else can we do? And then Salem and then the Grimm leaping towards the screen before it switches back to the heroes going, let's just live day by day and all the fight sequences. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> also, the season finale outro song, Armed and Ready. Hmm had very much uh, Yang overtones because some of the lyrics felt like callbacks to I Burn. Hmm. Yeah, definitely going to have to get a copy of that soundtrack. It's on my list, but I have to survive tax season first. Mm-hmm. Don't we all? Don't we all? <sighs> yes. And also in Ruby's narrative closing, we get some setup that oh yes, the other pieces on the villain board are moving because the only member we haven't seen in action from Salem's team is now at Professor Lionheart's office and using Salem's name. So mm -hmm. how much does Professor Lionheart actually know? And How much of a good guy is he? Mm -hmm. Because we're now staking our chances on this guy. Mm -hmm. And is he already corrupted? Or is he playing along? Or is he a double, triple agent? All of which is possible. It was a nice touch to show the tea set that Osben gave him. Hmm, I was wondering about that. It's like, it's green. What does green mean? I can't remember. Oh, Osben. Yes, because remember when Oscar and Osben were having that conversation. Oh, I remember that. I gave him that tea set. <laughs> and that would be the tea set. Mm-hmm. Also, nice touch while Oscar's on the train to look up at the Haven Academy poster saying be a hero. Because Oscar is way the hell out of his comfort zone. Yep, the name of this season was Subtlety. It just doesn't seem like it because Ruby, this series, not the character, isn't known for being subtle. Well, her too, but... Yeah, if I could turn into a bunch of rose petals and fire a scythe gun and move that fast, I wouldn't be subtle either. But personally, I'm more of the From Shadows type. You never see it coming. Mm -hmm. So, shall we move on to the after credits now? Yes. <laughs> that was a nice after credit scene. Crow back in a bar. <laughs> he yeah. must be feeling better. <laughs> Even if he's not, Crow in a bar, when is he not drunk? Apparently the answer was, during the entire time he was poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> I hate being sober. <laughs> <laughs> Need to fix that. Also probably makes him more findable when Oz does come back. He's like, oh, I gotta be in a bar so Oz can find me. <laughs> Poor Oscar. Walks, um, hello? Kid, I don't think you are old enough to be in here. Yeah, I'm getting to it. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to tell you I would like my cane back. <laughs> and then Crow steps forward. Oscar wisely steps, steps back, back. And then toss cane. Oh my god, that worked. This is real! <laughs> Holy, this is real! <laughs> ah, nice having you back, Ozpin. <laughs> this is gonna get real interesting. Yeah. Because, really, how does that work? Because right now, Ozpin and Oscar are two separate mentalities. Is Ozpin going to take over? Are they going to merge? Is Oscar going to retreat and allow Osmond to take the forefront? Kind of a whole Yu-Gi-Oh, um, Yu-Gi-Yami thing? Hmm. Where they actually switch out? Or does Osmond have to work through Oscar and Oscar's mentality, filters, morals, etc. every time? I think that one. I think we'll go with that one. That would be the latter, right? Mm hmm I think we'll go with the latter. Ozpin talking through Oscar and having to work through Oscar's mentality and stuff like that. Yeah, because, boy, Oscar's not in for an easy time at all. No, 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 no. <laughs> poor, poor Oscar. At least he knows he's not going crazy. That, there is something to be said for that. Mm-hmm. Also wise. 
It's going to be interesting because she bribed someone to get her somewhere. Yes. Where is she headed? Is she headed towards Ironwood or is she headed through, towards Mistral or? She's headed towards Mistral. Remember what she said to Clive? Winter's there. Oh. So she's headed towards Winter. Hmm. But Team Ruby, specifically Ruby, is in Mistral. Yang is on her way to Ruby in Mistral. Mm -hmm. The only ones that won't meet up there are probably Blake and Sun, because Blake and Sun are going after the White Fang, which is in their local area. Yes, unless something comes up to force them to leave, or something draws Team Ruby to Blake's fight. Mm. But with the signal towers down, they can't communicate as easily as they used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are still communications active in some areas, but not as widespread as they used to be. Mm -hmm. So any nitpicks or anything else you want to go over? I was really hoping by the season finale that Team Ruby would actually be within touching distance of each other, even if all it was just the actual hello moment. But they're still separated, even though they're now working towards each other. As the way the intro played out to me, it looked like they were working towards bringing the team back together. Not necessarily back as a cohesive unit, but back in the same location. Mm -hmm. So, going back to how you say often the intros are call forwards and foreshadowings, since that hasn't actually happened yet, that could still be a foreshadowing. Yeah, but I think, like I said, I think this intro is different. I think it was just stating the past and how it's reflecting on the future and not actually pointing towards the future. I still say there are some aspects that were forward pointing. Final thoughts? Uh, I both can and can't wait for season five because time is limited, but I want to know what happens next. Mm -hmm. They did a great job with that. Yeah, I'm not going to get the quote exactly right, so no nitpicking, please. Neil Gaiman says one of the greatest things to hear when someone's reading your story is, so what happens next? And that's not an exact quote, that's the gist of it. You can go look it up if you want. That reminds me, we might want to do an actual episode on a particular book both me and you read and really enjoyed of his. <laughs> Would give us an excuse to reread it. <laughs> And once again, go, oh my god, how did we not see this? Mm-hmm. Foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, I definitely want to see what's happening next season. But a break is nice. I mean, there's even websites that actually have counters now. <laughs> how long is the hiatus going to last in the next season of Ruby? Yes, because everything is on the internet. Mm-hmm. There was just so much going on this season, and there's probably a lot we missed. Like, if I could do that edit, I'd probably pick up on a whole lot more with all the stories chronologically following each other instead of being split around between the characters. I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby, Volume 4, Episode 12, Season Finale. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe, check out our other videos, and share these with your friends. If you'd like to see more of Lux's art, please check him out on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. If you'd like to support this page financially, please check out his Patreon and Coffee links. He also accepts commissions. Check link for availability.